Happy Snow Day, biology students. We're going to do our first podcast together this year, and here we go. So just like in class, you're going to want a blank piece of paper out, and you're going to want to title your notes appropriately. Notice that I've also underlined this like another notes we did in a different class period. And you also have your unit number and your page number. And throughout the PowerPoint and podcast, if I'm going too fast for you, this is a video, so you can always go to the bottom and pause it, okay? So here we go. So we are going to do the second step of protein synthesis, which is called translation. So far in protein synthesis, we started with our princess, the DNA, who can't leave the nucleus, right? Like a princess can't leave a castle. And we've done the first process of protein synthesis, or the first step called, you remember? Try to guess on your own if you think you do. All right, check your answer, transcription. And transcription was DNA being copied into what single-stranded nucleic acid? RNA. And the specific type of RNA we learned was called a messenger RNA. And remember, I helped you remember it through calling it also the middleman in this whole process. And the second step of making a protein or protein synthesis is called translation. And overall, since we're making a protein, this last thing should be, well, a protein. So this is kind of a complicated drawing. I don't necessarily think you need to draw it. It's just revisiting the whole process. All right, we're going to focus on this guy who circled translation. And in order to do that, we have to talk about the genetic code. So what really is the genetic code? Okay, the genetic code in DNA really to make you you is really just that sequence of nucleotides. And so far we've copied the nucleotides of DNA into nucleotides of RNA and that process was transcription. And that is going to somehow help us make a particular amino acid sequence. So in order to talk about that process of going to RNA nucleotides to amino acid sequence, which are two different types of macromolecule monomers, we have to first learn a little bit more about amino acids. So how many amino acids are there? There are 20, and they're pictured here to the right. Do you have to draw them? No, please don't. Don't be silly. Um, and these 20 amino acids are all a little bit different. Even though you're not drawing them, notice that their structures are different. They sometimes have these weird circles. Some of them have sulfur, which is an S. Other ones have multiple oxygens. Some of them only have one. They're all different, and they all have different names. And each one that's a different shape or structure has a different name. And we know throughout this class, we've learned that different shapes or structures all make different functions. Remember the shape of an enzyme, and enzymes are proteins, right? The enzyme shape determines its job or its function. Same thing, but here, a big protein is just a string of lots of these guys tied together like beads on a necklace. So depending on which amino acid goes in which sequence and in which order is going to determine what a protein's like. Lact lactase, an enzyme, is a totally different structure than another type of enzyme, and that's going to relate to its function. Also notice that these proteins have really crazy names. I'm never going to assume you know these names. Sometimes we're going to use the abbreviations, but you don't need to memorize them. You don't need to know all of them, okay? Just the idea of knowing that there's 20 of them and their shape is going to be related to their function is all that I care about so far. And in order to talk about this process of translation, which is kind of like the same translation if we were going to, from Spanish to English, translating two different languages, is we're going to be using a code or a process to translate nucleotides, which are DNA and RNA, into amino acids. Those are two different languages. And the code of this translation between those two different languages of nucleic acids into amino acids is going to be in a three nucleotide sequence. So whenever we're looking at mRNA, we're gonna only really focus at three nucleotides at a time. And I know that seems funny, but it's kind of like looking at words in a sentence. If you were to look at all the letters in a sentence at once and there weren't any spaces, the sentence wouldn't make any sense. But here, if we really break up mRNA into three letter sets, it's going to make a really usable language for us to translate into amino acids. 
we're going to learn more about this as we go, and it'll make more sense. But these three nucleotides within the mRNA, that code is called a codon. So this here's that definition. Okay. Let's talk about the steps. Now, the steps of translation really start with what we ended transcription with. Transcription ended with we we'll now have a DNA copy of uh, into an mRNA. And that mRNA, remember, was only for one specific gene. We didn't copy the entire DNA double helix for a chromosome. So we have a copy of DNA, just one gene, now an mRNA, and it's stuck in the nucleus. Well, we need it to get to a ribosome, which is the site of protein synthesis. So that mRNA will leave the nucleus. So that's the first step, and it'll go into the cytoplasm. The second step is the ribosome is actually two parts. Notice in this picture it kind of looks like two little beans. Well, those two little beans have to clamp on like uh, two little fists kind of punching themselves on to the mRNA and they find a specific location and that location is going to be three nucleotides that always are AUG and that three nucleotides are called the start codon. All proteins start with those three nucleotides that are going to code for a specific amino acid. We're going to learn about how that amino acid works in a second. But what I do want you to notice is the mRNA is this flat structure. Coming in is this funny T-shaped structure that has a U on it. Could this T-shaped structure be DNA if it has a U on it? No, it can't because DNA doesn't have U's. It has T's. So this must be a RNA. And we learned there were two types of RNA, both mRNA, and last class we learned there's also this thing called tRNA. So this T-shaped structure is, in fact, a tRNA. And interestingly enough, this tRNA has complementary bases, similarly three bases, to match this codon. And what is it doing through each step? Well, those three bases are actually base pairing together, the mRNA that's flat with the tRNA. And interestingly enough, we're going to talk about in a second, there's something hanging off the top of this tRNA. So this tRNA kind of is going to act like a truck. It's trucking in something at the top. You might be able to guess what it is. We'll get to that in a second. So now our ribosome set up, and let's talk more about tRNA. So here's a tRNA. This tRNA has another thing on the top, and this picture's labeling what it is. What is it? It's an amino acid. But this tRNA has different nucleotides at the bottom. Interesting. So tRNAs always are going to have an amino acid bound to the top. And at the other side, there's always going to be three nucleotides, very similar to a codon. But remember, we learned codons are in mRNA, and this is a tRNA. Hmm. Let's learn more. So at the ribosome, which can kind of be like a docking station, tRNAs are going to bind and truck in something to this mRNA codon. So each tRNA seems to have an interesting three nucleotide structure at the bottom of it. And interestingly enough, this three nucleotide structure is able to bind appropriately to a corresponding codon. This three nucleotides on this tRNA work with this codon, and this three nucleotides on this tRNA work with this mRNA codon. Ha! Huh. But each of them have different things that they're trucking in here at the top, which we decided these things at the top, based on the last page, were amino acids. Okay, remember how many amino acids there were from the beginning of the notes? There are 20. So these structures, somehow, the differences might be related to the fact that there are different amino acids on the top. Let's learn a new word. The part of the tRNA that matches using base pairing rules to the codon, right here, right? Here's the codon. This pair part's using base pairing rules to match up. That structure is called an anticodon. How will you remember the anticodon and the codon? Well, codons are always in mRNA. And T, with a T, codons are in tRNA. So this here, anticodon, this is a tRNA, right? And all tRNAs have different anticodons, right? And depending on their anticodon, they're going to have a specific amino acid. So different codons are 
information in the DNA that was copied into mRNA that are bringing and translating between nucleic acids to amino acids. So the tRNA is a truck that brings the appropriate translated amino acid in. It's crazy. We're going to practice this a lot because this is kind of tough, isn't it? Here's the next step. So as more amino acids come in, they're going to join together because an amino acid sequence, these monomers slowly are going to be brought into the ribosome, attached to a new codon. The ribosome is going to move along that mRNA flat sequence. See, it's moving kind of towards the right. And each time it moves, more tRNAs bring in the appropriate matching amino acids for these codons. Remember what that bond was called between amino acids from the first set of notes? It was called a peptide bond. Good. The last thing is eventually there's going to be an interesting, funny codon that tells the protein chain we're done. We've reached the end. If you keep going, you're going to add new protein amino acids, and that's not correct for the protein we want, so we need to be done. And once it reaches this specific type of codon called the stop codon, it stops. You guys are going to be practicing this whole process on paper next class. Just kind of having even a brief understanding is going to be good. I know it's tough and confusing, so you're awesome for doing these notes and doing your best. That's all I'm asking for. So let's revisit the types of RNA. The flat kind that was the middleman that's a part of both transcription and translation is mRNA, right? So this is from our last set of notes. So if you don't want to rewrite this, you don't have to. Although you might even just want to do this bottom half, right, to really have a good definition of tRNA. tRNA is not found in the nucleus. It was only involved in translation. It acts as a truck. And what is it trucking in, we just learned? Well, it trucked in amino acids, and they dock at the ribosome, matching up through base pairing rules with that mRNA. And each different truck or transfer RNA has a different amino acid. Good. So you could have decided to do this. You don't have to do this, Paige. I just think it's a good summary. And we're going to have one more summary after this last slide of a new vocab word. So the whole chain of these amino acids that the tRNAs brought in can be called a polypeptide. Now, remember that word, oops, that word peptide was the word for the bond that's holding the amino acids together. This is just a practice vocab word that you kind of need to know for the SOL. I know it's tough knowing so many terms that are synonyms, but you're doing awesome. Last but not least, let's just do one big summary. If you walk away with anything, walk away with this last slide. You ready? Almost done. Okay, what really was translation? Translation was taking this copy of mRNA, right? That's nucleic acids and making an amino acid chain. So mRNA is being translated into amino acids. And where did it happen? At a ribosome in the cytoplasm. Last but not least, the way this happened was by using codons, which are sets of three, and that was the language that allowed us to bring and truck in the appropriate amino acid with the help of a tRNA, which is our truck. So we're going to practice this this next class. I'm proud of you for doing your best, and I hope you really enjoy the snow days. All right, and hopefully we have Friday off too if we don't already have it off. Good job, guys. Feel free to email me and keep working on your procedures and materials lists. Bye.